Jackie Chambers. <laughs> uh, people in general were kind of like, you know, you tell them what we were doing and they're like, you're going to do what? Like they thought, I think that we were just going to live in a container as it comes. Like, well, are you going to have a toilet? Well, yeah, I'm going to have a toilet, you know. So it was it was kind of hard to explain. Um, some people had actually seen him before, so they were totally on board. So it was kind of a 50-50 of of people who got it and people who didn't, but everybody who's seen it, like, they're amazed. Yeah. Just yeah. to come, just to come see, the tax assessor would come out just to see what we were doing because he was like, I've, I've never seen this before. I don't really know how to put you guys in the program, but it, it's interesting, so. Uh, Joe Chambers. Well, the process started uh, back in 09, actually, um, when the real estate market crashed, home values went down. Um, we kind of had a realization that uh, it wasn't sustainable to live with the big mortgages and things of that nature. So we had a real desire to get out and basically build something that was sustainable uh, that we could basically build outright and own. Uh, so that way we could insulate ourselves from further uh, economic pressures, if you will. Uh, believe it or not, a stick-built house would have been less expensive and faster to build. Um, we had to do quite a bit of engineering. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first one that's been permitted in Washoe County. Uh, we went through about a year of permitting, uh, so there was a lot of cost involved with engineering. Uh, there was a lot of cost involved with special fasteners to attach it to the foundation uh, and things of that nature. So it really drove the cost up. That and the cost of the containers are, you know, anywhere from three to four thousand dollars a piece where you get them, and you still have to frame out the inside to create space to put insulation and put drywall and things like that on. So it's basically a house built with inside of a house um it's my little tiny home and i love it <laughs> um so i used to do architectural drafting and so i've always been into architecture and i've always been into like upcycling and different ways to do things and stuff like that and i came across a shipping container house and i told joe i was like God, that would be so cool to build one of these we uh we had one container that we had out here that we were just storing stuff in and so then we picked up another container and just started playing with the layouts and and came out with what we have Neat. um and so if you could describe what it looks like for me how would you describe it um it's what do we call it my little modern rustic uh shipping container house yeah so we have the exposed container and then wherever there's a window or an opening we put in the the wood siding to kind of blend the two together. Uh, well, we weren't allowed to use a plasma cutter, so we went through what five or six grinders. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the engineer specified that we had to use a grinder to cut all the steel out of the container. I think they were worried about the heat uh, deteriorating the, the structural quality of the steel. Um, so it was. Um, yeah, I think it was more like about eight or nine grinders that we went through <laughs> to cut all the openings in the steel out of the house. I kind of was thinking that it might be a little bit less expensive. Well, when we started looking at it, you could get a container for like 900 bucks. So it was like, well, that would be, we actually had a much bigger plan. We were going to go with a much bigger house. I think we were up to like six or seven containers with some framing in between. Um, but then when the, the price shot up, we decided, well, we had the one, so we got the second one and, um, we kind of figured, well, we'll use what we have. And then eventually we're going to have to build another house down there because the kids are going to get bigger. But And we're only at 511 square feet. So it's it's pretty small, um, which works for us right now because the kids are small. But um, yeah, I thought it would be, well, because when you do the research on the internet, it's all, you know, you can build it for $5,000 and you can do it in a month. And I was like, well, well let's, let's try it. But uh, realistically, it was much different than that. <laughs> You get it on a slab foundation, it could have potentially gone on a post and pier foundation, although the engineers didn't like that idea. Uh, hindsight being 2020, I would have pushed harder uh, to put it on a post and pier foundation. It would have saved quite a bit of money. Uh, would have been something that I could have done myself versus the foundation that's there now uh, was something, one of the things that we contracted out for. So that added some expense into it. Um, the, hardware. the hardware to attempt, we ended up spending, I think it was close to $2,000 on additional steel and, and special fasteners to meet the, the county's idea of what the requirement should be for as far as attaching to the foundation. Um, cut a lot of the materials. Uh, we Again, we did it all ourselves, so we saved quite a bit on labor. Um, but we did go with some 
uh, some higher end materials on the siding and on the interior with some of the, the stuff that we did in there. Uh, again, it was a smaller, you know, a smaller area. So when you're paying nine bucks per square foot for flooring and you only got 500 square feet, it's kind of like, why not? Versus trying to do 10,000 square feet at that price. Um, the containers and the, and the construction of it was probably what drove the cost up the most. Um, a lot of when you're in a in traditional construction, you can build, and if things aren't perfectly square, or whatever you know, you whack it with a sledgehammer and, and kind of tweak things to where it is that they've got to go. Um, when you're doing interior framing inside of a fixed structure, there's no room to move anything around. So, um, you know, a mistake or something like that, and you're you know going back a couple of steps and spending some more money. Um, but again, it's it's the cost of the containers was a big factor to it. Uh, we spent probably in total right around seven thousand dollars on containers. So like all the cabinets are custom, you know, you really have to make sure you're utilizing every square inch. So instead of just throwing in Home Depot cabinets, you know, we did custom cabinets and, and things of that nature. So it drove up the cost there, but it was worth it. <laughs> just the heart and the soul, the blood, sweat and tears. Um, it was amazing. And that the whole journey was full of little things like that. You know, the, the foundation getting in. I mean, there was a huge day when after the foundation was done that the crane truck showed up. And both containers were sitting over here where the where the goats are now and they picked them up flew them through the sky and they landed them right on the foundation it was like it just became more and more real like something we kept waiting you know the whole thing seemed like a pipe dream the whole time we're doing even though we're making process it's like yeah we're going to stall out at some point in time but it just kept moving forward so you know every day every week there was just some next major thing it was like oh my god this is real it's happening so uh it was just an, a really cool and amazing adventure and at one point we thought about just painting them both the same color, but you know, leaving all the, the steel exposed. But we decided it was kind of cool to have them two different colors and they have so much more character with all the stickers and everything on them. So yeah, we just left them. Um, I worked with a gentleman named Darren Nelson of Modern Storage. Uh, he sources the containers uh, wherever he sources them from. So uh, thanks to the courtesy of YouTube videos and my uh, motto of never letting what I don't know stop me, I uh, taught myself how to weld and uh, bought a secondhand welder on Craigslist and spent the, we had to have special inspections done. Um, the county doesn't do welding inspections. Uh, and as you and I were just talking, some of mine look okay and some of them you can tell I was, I was learning how to weld. Um, so the special inspector that came out uh, and looked at these, he was just blown away at the amount of engineering that went into this thing and said that it was just so overdone as far as the amount of uh, connections to the foundation. I'm pretty sure you could hook a Chinook to this thing and uh, either the foundation's coming out with it or, or it's not going. Well, I wanted to make sure that there was a place that you could come in, you know, that wasn't too crowded because I didn't want it to feel claustrophobic. Um, and then we cut out. So right about here, yes, here is where the two containers came together. So we cut out the whole section from in the back jog where you saw from there all the way to this end. We cut that whole section open. Um, so as you can see, it's a it's a pretty tight space, but um, it kind of keeps the kids from hanging out in their bedroom all the time. And they interact more with us and interact more outside. So instead of it being, you know, a place that they run away to and hide, they're, they're being more involved with everybody else and what's going on and, and playing outside and helping in the garden and things like that. I mean, one of the houses that we lived in was what, 2,300 square feet? And it, it was so big and it was like everybody was always in a different space and you didn't really see each other and, and I didn't like that. I didn't want to raise my kids that way. So, um, you know, part of the, the thought of going tiny was that we would be more connected with each other. So that was one reason I, I don't mind living in, in a tiny home. Yeah, I, uh, I actually work for a custom cabinet shop. So, um, yeah, I, we, we drafted everything out to maximize everything we had. And, um, yeah, I, I drew all the cabinets and sent them over to the shop and had them build them for us. And then we stained them and installed them and put everything together. She makes it sound a, a, a lot easier than it was, and she's not giving herself <laughs> nearly enough credit. She's been doing custom kitchen and bath design for going on 10 plus years now. And what she did in here with the cabinetry and the utilization of space um, was 
just amazing. It's what made the whole thing work. Um, everything's got a place. Everything's highly organized. I mean, she took advantage of every single nook and cranny. Uh, as you can see here, we're standing in front of her desk. She works from home where she still does kitchen and bath design. Uh, so she was even able to, in a house this small, get herself a dedicated workspace. So, um, and we can show you some of the other things that she did. It was pretty darn creative as far as finding space, but, uh, Okay, so in the kitchen, the kitchen was a big one because I like to cook a lot. Uh, so having a tiny kitchen in a tiny home is, was kind of hard. So this was one of them. We took a chunk of the metal that we cut out for one of the windows and made the back wall or this wall of the kitchen. And um, as you can see, I, I love cast iron. So these are pans that I actually use. So instead of having to take up cabinet space to store the pans, I just got heavy duty magnets and it's a decorative piece plus useful it was a it was a tricky balance of keeping it modern and clean so that it wasn't too busy but adding warmth back to it so um it's actually funny one of the ways that i saved money was we went with poplar doors which are typically a paint grade door because people don't like to see the grain of the poplar there's a lot of color variations and greens and things like that but i thought it stained really nice so that's what we did um, in the kitchen. And then in the toe kicks, like Joe was saying, we were trying to utilize every square inch we had. So I did drawers in the toe kicks. And they're not huge, but they're, you know, big enough to hold foil and, and extra spices and things like that. And then they just slide back in and you can't even notice that it's there. Cool. Yeah, we did uh, the trashes in there so it wasn't out taking up space. It started a long time ago because it was just trying to think of, you know, where where are we going to store this at and where are we going to put this? And, you know, being the the person who runs the household, you really think, you know, when I go grocery shopping and I come home with a cart full of stuff, it's got to go somewhere. So it, it did take a while to figure out where we we're going to put everything. One of my favorite rooms, which is the bathroom, um, I saw a wine barrel shower on the Internet that somebody did in a tiny house on wheels. And I thought, what a cool idea. And in here, because it's such a small bathroom, we really had a hard time figuring out, you know, we couldn't do a full-size tub. Um, I didn't want to do a standard shower enclosure because it would really, again, tighten up the space and, and not make it feel open. So uh, we found a, an extra large wine barrel and Joe not so lovingly cut it in half. Uh, he, he was not on board the whole time with the shower. But um, we made it work, and I just really think it turned out to be, it's, it's one of the coolest parts of the house. I'm trying to think outside the box and, and finding things that would normally go, you know, to waste or to trash or, um, and turning it into something useful. Um, we like it so much that the, we're basically going to base the design of the next house off of this one and make it just as big as it needs to be to be able to fit everybody in. Not using a container now. We're probably going to use a structurally insulated panel. Hmm. The cost, the speed of construction, um, kind of been there, done that now. So, you know, we, we came, we saw, we conquered. Um, I would like to build one more just to use what I've learned and apply that in, a, in another one. But uh, I just don't think that... Uh, the containers would be suitable for their for the next houses because again it's it's only going to be a little bit bigger so then it comes into you know is it the best material to use for the job and i just don't think it's going to work on the next one quite as well as it worked out here well and you're kind of stuck because the container's already its own size you're stuck with that layout there's not a whole lot that you can do so you're a little more confined with what you can do i would say it was probably Ten to twelve thousand dollars more than if I would have stick built it. I think we're probably into it right around sixty-five. But that includes the solar, the septic. I mean, things that people don't think about when they're building a house. So we didn't spend that on the house, but overall, to make it a living, you know, place where you could live with running water and electricity, that's about what it was. Uh, do it because you want to do it. Uh, not because you're looking to save money or you're looking for an easy path. Uh, it is very, very rewarding. Um, it is challenging. And if you're up for the challenge and want to live in a shipping container house, absolutely go for it. But those should be your primary reasons for doing so. The biggest challenge of it all was how to do it. 
I mean, it was everything is, um, again, you're building inside the box, you know, oh, outside the box thinking, well, it's really outside the box thinking, but you have to stay within the confines of the box. So you're, you really have to plan five or six steps ahead because what you do here may prohibit you from doing, oh, now that doesn't work. Um, so it's just a lot of, there's a lot of challenges that come through the, through the whole building process. Um, anybody, you know, the, 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 the million dollar piece of advice would be anybody that's looking to do it is get two shipping containers that are exactly the same. Um, I did not do that. Uh, mine were two different containers, although dimensionally the same, their construction was different, uh, which created some additional challenges. So get two containers that are exactly the same. You know, it was, I was going to build this house or die trying. So it was, um, no, we just kept moving forward. And again, you know, there's, there's a lot of rewards along the way. There's those little pieces that come along that just say, I'm, inspired and fired up for the next challenge because look what we just accomplished we could definitely save some folks uh some of the the headaches that we went through and some of the expenses we've had a couple of people contact us asking hey i got a friend that's thinking about doing this um but we haven't spoken to anybody yet but we're completely open to helping anybody that wants to come down this path uh you know to learn to experience we can share uh, what we've done along the way and you know consult or advise or something along those roles. It, it really is a rewarding project, but again, don't do it because you want to save money. <laughs> I wanted to do it just because it was a different type of construction. It was something different, something exciting, something I haven't really seen done out here. You know, um, working in the architectural industry, you see a lot of the same repetition. You know, everybody thinks they're doing something different, but it's pretty much all the same at the end of the day. And um, yeah, I just thought it would be an interesting uh, a project to do and something to be proud of, of, you know, this is ours and we did it different and yeah, sort of like an art piece. I did it to see if I could. That, that was me. I was, uh, she really wanted to have it. She was down for it. I was up for the challenge and it was, let's see if we can climb this mountain. So that was my driver. I would characterize it as just the beginning. It's just the beginning of, of, uh, of our new life. You know, we, we talked a little bit, we're starting the quail farm. I've got 72 acres here of land. Um, you know, there's going to be new challenges. There's going to be new opportunities. Uh, we've got three, uh, three kids that we're going to be raising out here. Uh, obviously Dutch being the youngest at just almost barely two years old. And, uh, I am looking forward to the rest of the adventure.